All right, so a lot of you guys wanted a video kind of showcasing it. So I actually took it out of my car. Um, I actually fully installed it and I'll be adding uh, some more photos of it in the dash, what it looks like and everything in a imager album attached to the description of this video. So um, I needed to remove it because for one, the microphone I was using, uh, it's just this little headset one, wasn't picking up sound very well. So I went by to the local Best Buy and when I checked online 30 minutes before I got there, they said they had a hands-free uh, Sony condenser mic. All right, I was gonna go ahead and pick that up. Well, apparently they sold it to someone right before I got there. So I only got this uh, USB type C cable which um, Android Auto over Wi-Fi works, but there's some stuttering and uh, it's not really as snappy as I'd like it to be. So I'll just go with a wired connection. So that's a, a 3.0 USB-C cable. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus only has 2.0, but um, we should be able to still get some good transmission quality over that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start Disassembling this one thing is is I'm filming from a phone and I'm not the best cameraman, so my apologies if like You can't see stuff. I'll try and make sure that um, Everything's kind of clear so First we'll do a little rundown of what we have on the display here if I can get it to stand up, right? so obviously we have the 7-inch wave share uh, capacitive touch display. We have a rotary encoder module. I'm actually having a slight problem with that, uh, with uh, the volume, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. So on the back here, I have some foam, and that's because when it's installed, there's about a half inch gap between. Also, this is non-conductive foam that I got out of another electronics project. So this makes sure that the screen, which, let me just slide it out, is not connected in any way to this faceplate, doesn't, you know, if you push it too hard, it doesn't come back. So I have an FPV style HDMI connector and a micro USB for power and touch control. So that's that. Uh, that's the details if you want to pick one up. I think it was about 60 bucks when I got it. Pretty good. I did have a few problems where uh, the entire right hand side of the screen was pretty much just lines. I didn't know what was causing it. I looked on the Amazon reviews and found that you have to disable a certain byte ID. After that, and uh, about 25 reboots works perfectly. Reboots was because for some reason the screen did decide to burn in a little bit, but uh, the burn in's now gone. I contacted Waveshare and they said it is one of the glitches of this model. So they said it does go away with time, and mine did go away with time. So no complaints there. So, I took apart my original stereo, and that's what this box is from. In fact, these are all the standard components. I kept them around just in case I needed to rebuild everything back to the stock stereo. So, we can go ahead and pop that lid off. Everything's kind of snap connect, which is great. With that box, it makes it easy for disassembling. Now, this is about as far as I'm going to disassemble this, uh, with the exception of pulling the actual pie out. And apologies, I just looked at the screen and realized you guys couldn't see anything. So, obviously we have right here the Metra connector. This is for a 2001 Toyota Avalon XLS with the JBL audio system. One reason is, is because with the JBL audio system, it has an amplifier built in. So I didn't need to have a preamp or an amplifier built in here. So everything, well, actually all this is preamped. I wouldn't have to have an amplifier in here. I could just send 
headphone quality audio out and control the volume on that and it would basically bring it up to the same specifications for my stereo. And I have this uh, Tob Sun 15 watt DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volt and 24 volt and outputs to 5 volt 3 amps which is perfect for the Raspberry Pi. That running over a micro USB right here. Now, this wire right here, uh, I don't know if it's uh, standardized across all of these, you know, uh, adapters. So I wouldn't go off of the wires, uh, the coloring. I, if you're gonna do this, make sure that you look at the user manual that comes with this connector, because it will give you a pinout of what every single one of those wires is. So obviously, these two wires right here. Those are my speaker connector connections. Uh, this little teeny wire, which runs back here, goes to a, a four prong, 3.5 millimeter jack. So and that way I can wire in a headset or lapel mic for hands-free audio. All right. So um, the other thing is I have these two 12 volt relays. I only have one connected right now. Uh, here it is. So this is what they are. They're just uh, five pin relays, 12 volt. And so this wire here is 12 volt from the battery. So this is always on, all right? And then these two wires are amp ground and chassis ground. And then this, red wire and blue wire right here is amp power on and 12 volt ignition which or accessory so when i turn the car on this red wire is live with 12 volts which powers the amplifier triggers this relay which heads over to these and it triggers a pin on the raspberry pi to wake it from sleep when it goes off, the relay undoes it and holds down another pin. And if it's held for more than 25 seconds, the Pi will shut down. Simple script I found off of GitHub. The other one that I have connected is connected to this orange wire right here. And that is illumination. Basically what that allows is when I turn my headlights on, normally um, your stereo speaker or stereo system, it would the LCD would light up. That way you can see it at night. Now, I don't need this because I have a backlit LCD and uh, it's always on. So for right now, I just have that connected up to a relay that I might use in the future. What I might use it for is a switch for day and night because in Android Auto, um, when it's nighttime, it switches to kind of a dark theme, which I personally like, so I just have it set in settings to always be night, but I might want it in the future where it switches between the light theme and the dark theme at the proper times and everything. And I can do that all based off the light sensor on my vehicle that also controls my headlights. So right here, we just have that potentiometer. I, not potentiometer, rotary encoder. I just found a bunch off of Amazon. I don't know where I put the rest of them, so I can't get one to show you. So I'm gonna set the phone down and I'm gonna take off this, this side panel right here. Maybe. Okay, so with this side panel off, uh, I'll grab a flashlight, if I can find one, there we go. Okay, so what you're seeing right there is the back of the USB sound card. If we head over here. You obviously have the Raspberry Pi, and then you can see those 3.5 millimeter jacks. I'm using all six channels. Uh, one channel goes to the uh, 
four pin 3.5 millimeter converter and that brings the mic and two channels in for a headphone. I'm using that. Uh, it's not really going to be piped to any audio devices. It's just kind of there for debugging purposes as well as I needed the mic connection. Then obviously I have the Raspberry Pi. I have one of those solid metal heatsink cases with fans. Uh, when the Pi is in idle, the fans are running and um, it keeps the Pi to a nice 36C always, which is really great because the center console is right by my uh, front air vents and when you have the heater on, it gets quite toasty in there. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling out the Pi. I put some double-sided sticky tape underneath it to keep it from vibrating and, you know, causing one of the GPIO pins to unplug or something. So I'm going to have to pry it out a little bit. Once again, I'm going to set the phone down and pop that out. And I'll carefully slide it out, and then I'll be able to plug in that USB cable. Alright, so here I have the Pi out, and uh, there you can kind of get a better view of that sound card. Uh, maybe I can get it where you can see the multiple jacks. Not really. So, I'm going to go ahead and connect my USB-C, and I'm going to route it through this top hole, just because that's where I'm routing most everything out through. And I'm just going to plug that in, maybe. Try and do everything one-handed and, you know, make sure that everything's in the frame. A little tricky sometimes. So, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and assemble all of this back together. Uh, I'm actually going to drop the sound card. Looks like it's just connected. Just a little bit. We'll see if we can... Just so I can kind of move those wires out of the way. Plug its USB cable. That way it wants to slide. It's got its double sided sticky. So, and there's the audio connections. So, we have uh, front and rear for front and rear, respectively. Microphone and center and bass right there. So, the center and bass just goes to that five point. Or, I'm sorry, 4-pin, 3.5mm jack, and uh, so does the mic. Everything else goes to the Metro connector right there. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything. I hope this video uh, was somewhat uh, informing on what my project is. I kind of suck at, you know, telling how I did things. So, yeah, that's that.